new stuff for you, um, at least something that has a more of a step-by-step -step process for you. So just remember, ladies and gentlemen, f of, f of g of x, all that simply means is f of x times g of x. That's all we're doing. We're multiplying one function by the other function. So we say, well, what is f of x? f of x is 2x. And what is g of x? g of x is the square root of x minus 1. Now, the problem did say to write the domain as well, right? So we want to find the domain of the product. Well, huh? This is problem number 10. Then, if you guys look at this, I mean, I can apply the distributive property, but I can't multiply a term outside of a radical inside of a radical. So you know, there's really not much I can really do as far as simplifying this problem. I can write this as 2x times the square root of x minus 2x. Um, or I could leave this in you know, really the factor form, but I mean, that's it. I mean, that's really not really much I can do. However, when finding the domain, that brings into another question. Because remember, when we talked about the domain, we looked for our two restrictions, right? Two restrictions. It's either we have a variable, or it's either we have a variable in the denominator, or we have a variable under a radical. And when we have a variable under the radical, that value, that radicand, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the domain, all you simply do is take your denominator, or I'm sorry, take your radicand and set it greater than or equal to 0. And that's it. That's your domain x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because you can plug in x, you can plug in any number for x out here or in here, but you can only plug in x's that are greater than or equal to 0 in for there. So that's why your domain is for all values that are greater than or equal to 0. Okay.